A friend messaged the other day and said that night on the patio when we were all sitting outside and eating dinner and drinking beer was the best night of the summer and I knew exactly what she meant. Those moments really are the best. A little bit of booze, a little bit of food. That is what today's recipe is all about. Get out, get away. I am not a train chef, but I am a full-time foodie. Foodie photographer to be exact. I've created a six-figure career from my kitchen table. Come on into my studio where we'll cook not just good food, but gorgeous food. I'm Brooke Lark, and this is How to Cook Like a Food Stylist. Summer is in full swing, and the produce in grocery stores and farmers market is at its peak. This time of year, there is nothing better than the tomatoes. So I thought, let's create a recipe that features the absolute beauty and variety of all of the tomatoes that are in season this time of year. I have pulled together a ton of different beautiful cherry tomatoes in all of their colorful glory, and today we are going to make a beautiful goat cheese tomato tart. So of course, before we start the recipe, we really have to concept the way that we want this recipe served. And because this is gonna be kind of a pizza-shaped, heart-shaped tart, I'm gonna go ahead and start with a really beautiful cast iron pizza pan. And I've put just a slice of brown parchment paper over the top. I will sometimes use a white parchment paper, but in this case, I just really like the depth of the brown and it adds a little bit of color. And I'm gonna show you a quick trick. Whenever I'm prepping a recipe that I'm going to shoot straight out of the oven, and maybe it's still going to stay on the plate or the pan or on the parchment, I like to take the parchment paper, snip it into, you know, not a perfect square because I always like that kind of movement and the imperfection and lived-in look of a slightly skewampus piece. And then I'm actually going to give this some texture. So a quick crumple, I'm gonna lay this down and then it's time to cook. This recipe is everything that I love about summer. It's quick, it's simple, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I love it because it doesn't take a lot of prep. So I'm starting it off with a round piece of puffed pastry. And you can buy puffed pastry normally in most grocery stores in a square, but I looked for the round because again, this, this tart is gonna have this final heart-shaped look. And so I am just trying to make this prep process easy for me. Okay, so I've unrolled my puffed pastry. And the first thing that I'm going to do before I put anything onto this is just flip over the edges of the pastry to create kind of a gentle crust. And I am doing this entirely because it looks beautiful. And at the top, we're just gonna go ahead and use a knife to cut this heart shape in. And then I'm just gonna pinch and pull this into a shape that I'm happy with. Okay, I have some softened goat cheese and I'm just gonna kind of spread it across the top of the crust. And I am just gonna kind of smash this down a bit because I don't want the crumbled look. I want the slightly more pressed look in my final pastry. I'm gonna add a quick bit of salt to the top of the goat cheese because I want every single bite to be perfectly seasoned. And I think a little touch of salt and a quick drizzle of honey will make the difference when you take a bite. Okay, we're gonna slide that out of the way because it's basically ready. And I have gathered a ton of different cherry tomatoes. Now you could use sliced tomatoes as well, but I am just so in love with these cherry tomatoes. And I got them at our local Whole Foods and of course looked for the ones with these little greens on top because I am going to use those greens to really pull your eye right into the picture. Now you wouldn't normally cook a tart with greens on top, but I am telling you, hang in there with me, you are gonna love the final look of this. I'm gonna slice a few of these right in half down the center so that we get a little bit of that seed peeking through. Again, just to give us a little bit of a surprise when we look at the way that it all comes together. So the secret to this tart is just that completely abundant look. So pack it full. Do not go easy on the tomatoes. Whenever I'm adding tomatoes to a dish, I love using these strawberry tomatoes. They come pre-packed with the little vines still attached. Now there is a secret to adding these to any recipe. I always like to leave the vines attached because there's something so beautiful about that visual cluster being stuck on top of your recipe. 
but they're really, really sensitive. So I like to snip them right down the center and then very, very gently, I'm gonna lift these and transfer them over here. I've kind of left a spot at the bottom of my tart and I'm going to stick them on whole vine, still attached and all. Quick styling trick. I'm gonna squeeze a couple of these tomatoes so that the seeds burst out and add just a little bit of extra movement and size and shape to the top of my crust. A little extra honey and salt, and then I'm going to drizzle some of this beautiful rosemary flavored oil right on top to give a little extra flavor to the final dish. All right, are you ready for a total food stylist nerdgasm? I have two different honey drizzlers in my studio. This is them. I use one of them all the time and I use one of them hardly ever. Can you guess which one? Okay, this one with the nice little round honey pot shape I use in just about every photo. I think that it's just like the perfect antique look and instantly says I'm a little honey drizzler. This one with the elongated tip just comes off not quite as well in photos and so I rarely use it. Okay, we're basically ready, but I'm gonna add one final touch. I'm gonna go ahead and brush the edges of my tart with egg and then sprinkle just a little bit of sesame seed. And if any of you have seen my blueprint special, you will know I use the word texture a lot. That is actually what we are going for here, is just taking all of that white crust from the edge and just giving it a little bit of interest so that it's not just screaming at you from the picture. All right, it is time to bake this baby. It is looking gorgeous. 20 to 25 minutes in a 450 degree oven, and then I'll check it, and if it needs a little more time, I'll throw it in for a few minutes more. This recipe was inspired when I was scrolling through Instagram and I found a gorgeous photo from Thrive Mags. If you don't follow them, go ahead and check them out. It is some of the prettiest food photography that I have seen on the internet. Added bonus, it's all vegan. All right, out of the oven, and this tart is looking gorgeous. I love the coloring around the edges here, how that egg white just turned it that nice brown. The addition of the seeds really does just add a little bit of extra texture and color in here. Cannot wait to get this shot. I'd initially planned to shoot on this backdrop that I created that is kind of a gray cement style backdrop, but now that I have this brown parchment and all of that red here, I realize that the actual design would look so much more beautiful if it's up against a blue backdrop, so I'm going to go ahead and swap it out. When the tomatoes cook, they start to wilt, and that is an absolutely gorgeous look, but I feel like I really want to evoke this sense of freshness, and so I'm going to slice a few fresh tomatoes, arrange them on top in little clusters, again, just so that when you look at this tart, it just screams this fresh, beautiful summer farmhouse look. And I'm also adding a little bit of flour because I just want this to look like it just came out of a kitchen where it was made with like loving care. So adding just a little bit of flour and I'm gonna rub that in. Tomatoes went in the recipe, so we're gonna cluster a few tomatoes around the edges. It would make sense to throw a knife in there, maybe a little bit of oil. And then I'm just gonna garnish with some fresh herbs. And it's not that crazy to pick individual leaves and decide where you want them. When was the last time you did something for the first time? Took a chance and danced under the moonlight. Let go just so you could feel alive. Oh, oh. Thank you so much for joining me on this episode of How to Cook Like a Food Stylist. Next time, coming your way, the most beautiful naked cake that you have ever seen. Complete with some of the hottest and trendiest food toppings in the world. You do not want to miss this. And you guys, subscribe. We have so much beautiful, tasty, gorgeous food coming your way. If you want to eat pretty, then hit that subscribe button because you are going to want to be here every week as we cook like a food stylist. Thank you so much. See you next time. Also important, children. They slow down the process tremendously. <laughs> Did it. Did it. <laughs> Did you just burp? No, I just had a big wad of phlegm. <laughs> right in my talker. <laughs> oh, okay. 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 Okay.
Okay, go okay. again. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. We call that phlegm tart. <laughs> <Ew>. <laughs> Tomato phlegm <Stop>. tart. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. <laughs>